Today on Animal Fact Files, we're going to be talking about hellbenders. It, it, it's okay for me to say this. It, it doesn't really sound totally kid-friendly. I mean, that's what they're called. Okay, I mean, if you say so. Hellbenders are also known as mud devils, snot otters, lasagna lizards, and a lot of other names that may make this sizable salamander seem like the most well-respected creature in the animal kingdom. Heck, we aren't even sure where the name Hellbender originated. So what's up with the wacky names? Some think it's due to the Hellbender's contemptible complexion. They're the largest salamanders found in North America and the third largest salamanders in the world. They can grow to be more than two feet in length. They typically appear dark brown or gray in color, and some sport darker spots along their backs. They have wrinkly skin and a flat body with an upright flat tail. They don't even really use this tail for swimming, although it looks like it would make a pretty awesome rudder. Mostly they use it for keeping themselves balanced in the water. Plus, they coat themselves in mucus, possibly to help make them a difficult and slippery catch for predators. So yeah, they look a bit odd, but Hellbender? Really? I'm just going to assume that's just code for Firebender, and these guys are the original Firebenders of our world, who live in water. My logic is sound, okay? Hellbenders do often get confused with another oddly named salamander, the Mud Puppy. Mud Puppies have external gills that look like some boss headgear for the next Mud Puppy party, but Hellbenders don't have external gills once they reach adulthood. They actually breathe through their skin, taking in oxygen from the water around them. This is why they require clean, healthy water and like to live in faster moving streams and rivers that can become more oxygenated by turbulence. Since they're a species that is so impacted by any environmental changes, they give us clues as to how an ecosystem is holding up. And frankly, the environments in which they are living aren't doing so well if the hellbenders have anything to say about it. There are two subspecies of hellbender, the eastern hellbender and the ozark hellbender. Eastern hellbenders live in a somewhat narrow stretch of land from southern New York to northern Alabama, while the ozark hellbender is only found in small sections of river throughout Missouri and Arkansas. The Ozark subspecies is considered endangered, and the Eastern Hellbenders are listed as near-threatened as of this recording. In reality, over the past 25 years, scientists have seen dramatic population decline of these awesome amphibians, with some areas showing upwards of 80% population loss. That's pretty drastic, and the worst part is they aren't entirely sure why it's happening. However, pretty rigorous introduction efforts have been made for placing young, captive-raised Hellbenders into their natural environments. Young because that's the age range that seems to be most affected by the loss of population. See, Hellbenders can live a long time, like up to five decades long. So they don't reach sexual maturity until a little later in life, that being around five years of age. When the young Hellbenders are the ones that are dying too early, it doesn't leave enough viable adults to produce the next generation. Plus, it's been theorized that female Hellbenders only come into season every two to three years as opposed to once a year or more often. If this is accurate, it leaves even less opportunity for hellbenders to create more hellbenders. However, when they do procreate, these salamanders can make the best dads ever. The males will build nests under large flat rocks and protect them voraciously, even chasing away other hellbenders. They'll entice one or more females in to lay their eggs, and he will fertilize them externally, kind of like fish do. Depending on how many females he's able to attract, he'll have up to 2,000 eggs under his watchful eye. After anywhere from 45 to 75 days, depending on their location, they'll hatch with a yolk sac attached that they'll use as their first source of energy in life. As they get older, they'll begin eating crawfish, the main staple of their diet, but they'll also dine on worms and other invertebrates. Most people who live where hellbenders are found aren't even aware of their existence, since they're nocturnal creatures and are rarely seen. If you happen to see a hellbender in the wild, it's best to just leave it alone and let it be on its way. In some areas, it's even beneficial to contact a local wildlife representative to help with population counts. Maybe with the spread of a little bit of knowledge and awareness, these superb salamanders will be around for a long time. For more facts on Hellbenders, check out the links in the description. Hellbenders were suggested by a friend of the show, so thanks for the suggestion. Be sure to give a thumbs up for these awesome animals, and thank you for watching Animal Fact Files.